Welcome to lesson one of uh, rates of reaction. We're going to be looking at collision theory today. Uh, we're going to think about some of uh, the key terms and basic ideas. Collision theory is something that we use to explain the factors that affect the rate of a chemical reaction. So we're going to think about what a chemical reaction is first of all. If we look at an example, uh, and this is an example of a reaction between hyd uh, chlorine, hydrogen and chlorine, uh, and they react, so we call these the reactants, so they react together to make two molecules of HCl, which is hydrogen chloride. So these are the products. So what's actually happening during a chemical reaction is that the reactant molecules collide with each other. And this word collide means that they hit each other. And when they collide or hit each other, um, the bonds in the reactants break. So there are bonds that hold these two chlorine molecules together and bonds that hold these two hydrogen molecules together. They break um, and then new bonds form in the product. So if I was going to draw this slightly differently up here, what I could do is draw Cl bonded to a Cl um, and this molecule, these two atoms, collide with um, a, H, a, a hydrogen molecule and the bonds rearrange and we make a HCl and a HCl molecule. Um, in the rest of the uh, lesson, we're actually going to point you towards some animations that you can have a look at with this, which uh, make this a little bit clearer. So the key idea here is that um, during a chemical reaction, the reactants, which are on the left-hand side of this chemical occasion, these molecules collide, um, and then uh, the bonds break, rearrange, and we make new products. So uh, why do the particles move? Well, we need to know that all particles, okay, and I was talking about molecules up there, but all particles um, have kinetic energy. You'll remember from physics this idea about kinetic energy being the idea that particles, uh, sorry, that, uh, the energy associated with movement. So we've got kinetic energy. We've, uh, all particles uh, have got movement energy. Um, and in a liquid and in a gas, this means the particles move randomly. And it's a really important idea that we recognise that they're moving randomly. So what is collision theory? Well, we talked earlier about the fact that we have reactant molecules. And this time I'm just going to label um, my... Uh, reactants as just A and B. So these are two reactant particles and they're moving randomly and there's a chance that they could hit each other. And when they do hit each other, I'm just trying to draw an uh, idea here about a chemical reaction taking place. So these are our reactants. When they do hit each other, they make, in this case, just one product. How about we call this a product here? So it's the idea about we're looking at Collision theory is looking at reactant particles moving. They can collide. And remember that word collide means hit each other uh, and then form products. And what collision theory does is looks at the factors that affect the amount of collisions. Okay, so collision theory looks at the factors. So and then you'll see later things like temperature, concentration, surface area that affects the number of collisions um, and therefore the rate of reaction. So it's the theory that allows us to explain how these collisions and these factors affect the rate of a chemical reaction. So 
And this is a really important idea here about not all collisions result in chemical reactions. So if we think about, um, I'm just going to our uh, our model now. I'm just drawing lots more particles now. So we've got two different reactant particles, uh, one of which I coloured in, uh, and one of which I hadn't. They're moving about randomly. All of these, especially in the gas state when they're gases, they're moving about randomly. And there's a chance that they could collide with each other. But in fact, most collisions don't result in a reaction. And the reason is that the, um, they've actually got to collide with a lot of energy in order for a chemical reaction to take place. And we call that the activation energy. So we will say that reactant particles sorry, that's my spelling, but reactant particles um, must have enough energy um, when they collide to overcome what's called activation energy. So they have got to have energy equal to or greater than the activation energy in order for a reaction to take place. So let's just have a quick brief review about what we've looked at. <clears throat> so we've talked about a chemical reaction that's taking place when the particles that make up the reactants in a chemical reaction collide or hit each other. And then the bonds in those reactants break, the particles uh, rearrange before get new bonds formed and we have products formed. We know that particles have kinetic energy. All particles have kinetic energy and that they move randomly. And that collision theory is what the theory that explains the factors that affect um, the number of collisions and therefore the rate of a chemical reaction. Um, and then that we know that not all collisions result in a chemical reaction because if a collision doesn't have enough energy, it's not going to result in a chemical reaction. Um, and that reactant particles must have enough energy, so a lot of energy, to overcome to the activation energy. And there's one last thing I'm going to add here, and that is to state that, um, that a collision with, um, coll with enough energy... Um, is called a successful collision. That's a key term that we're going to see a lot in future lessons. So collisions with enough energy um, is called a successful collision. So <clears throat> there's uh, four key terms that we uh, need to look at. Collision is just where particles hit each other. It could be successful, it might not be. It has to have enough energy, uh, a lot of energy, or more energy than the activation energy um, to be called successful. Reactant are the particles that are present at the beginning of a reaction. Uh, and the product are the particles made during a chemical reaction. I'm using the word particle here because it can, we, can, we can talk about, <clears throat> uh, particles can describe the word molecule, can describe the word ions, so we need to be aware of that. Uh, activation energy is the minimum energy required and that word required means needed for a collision to be successful. 
Okay, so hopefully you've made some notes during the video. If not, feel free to go back and have a look at the um, a video and uh, again. Uh, there are four questions on here. So these four questions uh, will help us uh, process in our brains uh, the notes that we've made. So if you want to pause the video and have a go at those and then afterwards I will put the answers up. And then here are the answers. If you want to pause that and have a look at those. <coughs> 